Hello again. Uh, today I'm going to try to tackle Circular Unreasoning by the Pedaling Pianist. And this seems to be uh, a little bit of a twist on the circle rule that has become quite popular uh, as of late. So the rules are, we've got the typical arrow rule where the digit on the circle of an arrow is going to equal the total of the digits that are actually on the arrow. We've got an anti-circle rule which says um, I assume it means this circles on the arrows. Uh, if there's a digit in the circle, that tells you how many circles do not have that digit on it. So let's say this were a seven, then that would mean that of the remaining circles, seven of them would not be seven. Uh, and then there's an additional bonus of this rule, which is the same thing applies to arrows. So if there were a number on an arrow, say a one, then that means that there will only be one arrow in the whole puzzle that doesn't have a one on it. So that's actually going to be quite restrictive. So I'll admit, um, as I was setting up my uh, recording situation, I, I've been thinking about this rule a little bit. And one of the things that I noticed is that, um, well, all these arrows are three digits long. And three digit arrow, and, and none of them break um, break sight of each other. What I mean by that is every single arrow always sees, every digit on the arrow sees itself. So we don't have a situation where, um, you know, you can imagine an arrow that goes from this circle over here and up like this, and then you might have, you know, these two digits that don't see each other on that theoretical arrow. And when that happens, then the digits don't want to be different, but here they do because, um, well, for the most part, they stay in the same box. But and even when they don't, they just stay in a straight line, so they still see each other. So that means that on a particular arrow, all the digits will be different. And why that matters for three-digit arrows especially is it's very unlikely that there won't be a one on the arrow. The only way, in fact, that there won't be a one on the arrow is if the um, circle is a nine, right? Because if there's anything less than a nine, let's say it's eight, then if I don't have a one, right? The smallest I can make this is two, three, four, and that's gonna to add to nine. So they just won't work. So if there's an eight, there has to be a one on the arrow. So I know there's gonna be lots of ones on these arrows. Um, and if I count them, so how many of these are there? There are one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten arrows here. Yeah, so because there are ten arrows, I, I guess maybe in a second I'll try to prove that there has to be at least one with a one on it, but Suppose, suppose that there's a one somewhere in this puzzle on an arrow. That means all of them will have a one except for one. And so nine of them will have ones. And this makes a lot of sense because there are nine boxes, there are nine ones in the puzzle, and there are 10 arrows. So nine of them will probably have a one on it and one won't. And that one that won't will have to be a nine. Um, and the other thing that's pretty restrictive here is these circles all have to be at least six. And because, again, the smallest I could make, say this arrow, is a one, two, three, triple. One plus two plus three is six. So that would be the smallest it could be. These numbers could get bigger, and that would make the number in the circle bigger. So all, all of the uh, digits in the circles would be at least six. And now I'm thinking about the anti-circle rule on these digits. I'm thinking, you know, are there any missing? So when you see these circle rules, I think the first thing you should always do is, is count them and try to figure out, okay, well, what's missing? And here I think actually there's nothing missing. So um, because there are 10 circles, suppose that six, seven, eight, and nine were all represented here. What would that mean? So, um, well, there are nines. Suppose there were nines in the circle on a circle somewhere. And in fact, we know there's gonna to have to be, but suppose there were nines. Then how many circles would not have a nine on it? Well, that would be nine, right? Because of this anti-circle rule. So nine of the circles won't have a nine. And that means one would. So if there are any nines, there's only one because uh, the anti-circle rule means that if there were a nine on it, there'd be no more. So there's either one or zero nines on these circles. You can do the same thing with eights. Uh, if there's an eight on a circle, then there are two of them. Because if there's an eight, then there are 
eight circles that don't have an eight, 10 minus eight is two, so two of them will be eight. So again, with eights, it's either zero or two of them are eights. You can continue on, sevens, zero or three of them, sixes, zero or four of them. Now, because there are 10 circles and only these four possible numbers that can go in them, then that means they all have to be there because if there are any missing, so if they're all there, then there's four sixes, three sevens, two eights, and one nine, that's 10 total digits that go in circles. And if any of them are missing, there wouldn't be enough digits to go into the rest of the circle. So I, I can see that all four of those digits are gonna be represented on the circles. They're all gonna appear at least once, and I know how many times they're gonna appear, right? They're gonna be four sixes, three sevens, two eights, and one nine. And because there's only one nine, I know there are gonna be ones on the arrows because every digit that's not a nine, right? They're all going to be, they're all gonna have a one on it. So somewhere on this puzzle, there's gonna be one circle with a nine. That arrow will not have a one on it. It'll be a two, three, four, triple. And then all the rest will. And now I'm trying to think through about what I can say about what's on the arrows. Like my instinct is that it's going to be just the digits one, two, three, and four. Because um, let's, what would happen if there were a five? Suppose there were, sort of, let's start with, well, yeah, let's say there were a five. Suppose there were a five on an arrow. Let's say this was five. What would happen is that would mean that there are five fives on arrows because there are 10 arrows. According to the anti circle rule, five arrows would not have a five exactly, which means five would. So it has to be five fives. Well, if there's a five, we already said that the nine has to go the two, three, four, or triple. So the fives are going to go on eights only, right? So if there are five fives, there has to be five eights, but there are only two eights. So we can't have a five. Um, and with sixes, which is the highest you could put on here to get to nine, we're going to have the same problem. If there's a six on an arrow, then there are four sixes because six of the arrows won't have a six. Four, it means four will. And so there have to be four sixes on arrows, which means there have to be four nines in circles, but there are only, there's only one nine. So there are no sixes either. So everything on an arrow is going to be either one, two, three, or four. So I, yeah, I think that math is going to work out. So the sixes are all going to be one, two, three. The sevens are all going to be one, two, four. The eights are going to be one, three, four. And the nines are going to be two, and one nine is going to be two, three, four. So I think that all works out. So I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to erase these for a second to give me some room to try to write something. So I'm just going to write out. So really just one, two, three, and four. Um, ones are going to appear on sixes and sevens and eights. Twos are going to appear on uh, sixes, sevens, and nines. Threes are going to appear on sixes, eights, and nines. And fours are going to appear on seven, eights, and nines. So how many of these are there? So six, sevens, and eights, there's nine of them. Right, three, four, four threes plus three sevens plus two eights. Six, sevens, and nines, the only thing we're missing are eights, so there are two of them, so there are eight of those. Right, we're missing sevens here. We're missing sixes here. So, and that works out here. If there's a one on an arrow, there are nine of them. If there's a two on an arrow, there are eight, three, there are seven, four, there are six. So it's all, the math all works out. Um, so that, I, I felt like I'd already proved to myself these had to be one, two, three, four, but looking at the way that math um, added up, I'm now 100% sure that that's going to work, that we have one, two, three, fours on arrows only, and that's going to um, satisfy this anti-circle constraint. So now I'm trying to think through, okay, where, where are there arrows that kind of bump into each other in ways that might tell me, because so in some way I have to figure out which arrows are which. That's going to be the hard part of this puzzle, right? So I'm looking for where there are lots of arrows, and this kind of section jumps out at me as a region that has four arrows. It doesn't have four circles, but it does have four arrows and only three boxes and three columns. So and the, the reason that matters, I'm thinking about ones. So um, 
There's only one arrow in here that doesn't have a one, and that's getting paired with a nine on the circle. So in these four arrows, only three of them could possibly have a one, which means one of them doesn't, which means one of these four circles is going to be our nine. I don't know which one yet, but it's going to be one of these. I'm going to color that blue, just so I remember that the nine is in one of these. And um, I'm almost thinking about highlighting. That means there has to be a one. Yeah, I'm just going to change these ones to corner marks to say that every single one of these arrows that I've marked here has to have a one because the one that's missing is somewhere over here. So now I'm trying to think, okay, where, where do ones have to go? Okay, so now, now I see this, right? So looking at these three columns, there has to be three ones, which means there's a one in each column. The only place a one can go in column six is here. So that's going to be our one here. That means our one in column and box nine will be there. Oh, and that tells me where the nine is. Okay. Um, so not so hard. That's going to be one because two, three, four are taken here. So I'm going to get rid of this coloring because our nines are now done. Everything else is going to have a one. All right. So one of these will be a one. So not the here. Um, right. And now I know that none of, I mean, I knew that before. None of these are nine. Those aren't ones, so this is. These aren't ones, so this is. Um, one of these is a one, so that's not. So that's one is here, that's one here. So we're almost done with ones. We just have this pair to disambiguate. Which one's which? Um, and then from here, Um, okay, so now I'm thinking about there has to be four sixes, three sevens, two eights. These aren't nine because we already have our nine. So now I'm trying to think through, like, you know, if I look at these two circles, obviously they have to be different. But I'm wondering, I think, and these two have to be different. So why do these two have to be different? These two have to be different because suppose they were the same. We've already kind of established that four, if I say that this is a six, I know the three digits will go with it. It's one, two, three. Same with seven, it's one, two, four. And that's actually true for eights as well. It wouldn't normally be because eight could normally have two possibilities with three digits. It could be one, three, four, or one, two, five. But because there are no fives, it has to be one, three, four. So if I know the digit on the circle, I know the three digits it's paired with. And I know that this digit is different from any of those. So these three digits cannot be identical to those three digits because this one isn't in the, this arrow. So these have to be different. Um, same thing here. So this is different from, these two are different because this cell is not either of these and it's not one. So this cell does not appear on this arrow which means these three digits differ from those three digits, so these circles are different. So that means this is different from those two. If I can show that those are different as well, then I'll know that these three are, are one each of six, seven, and eight. Uh, and that is true because, so, so suppose it weren't true, suppose these three digits were identical to these three, and so we had the same digit on the arrow. Well, if that were true, I'd have, you know, there's obviously a one in each of them, but then the other two digits would also be the same. So whether they're two, four, two, three, three, four, whatever they are, they'd be the same. And that would mean that those two digits, I'd have one in column three here, or they'd both be in column three here, they'd both be in column two here, they'd both have to go in column one here. But only one of them can, the other, you know, I can't put both of those whatever those two, three, four, whatever they are. I can't put both of them in this single cell. I have to put one of them up here, but none of these are two, three, four, because those are all taken here. So these are in fact different as well. So I'm gonna color these 
just so I remember, orange, blue, purple. Just to, to remind myself that these three are all different. Um, I'm wondering if I could do the same thing in some other direction. So I think it's these. I think I can do the same thing here. So, um, why are these different? These two are different because all of their digits appear in the left two cells, which means if they're the same, then those three digits, which are the same, all have to show up in column six here, which is impossible. So those two are different. Uh, these are these different. These have to be different. So those are the same. Then this cell would go here. Yeah, same thing. It's in this. It's again the same. These are all except for this one. So ignore the one because everything has a one. These two digits appear in these. And in fact, it's the exact same logic with all of them because um, all of these digits are on the left two. So if any two of them are the same in the third box, right? I would need to put both of the missing two, three, four digits on the right side, and none of the two, three, four digits go on the right side. Um, oh, well, hold on. That's not. That's not true. All right. So um, it, it is true, but it not. It's not as obvious, perhaps, as I expect. Because there actually is one. I thought. Well, there are no two, three, four digits, but that wouldn't make any sense because then there'd be no two, three, four in the column. But what's happening is one digit from two, three, or four, right? So, so where did two, three, four go in this column, right? Um, well, if I look here, I've got all the digits one, two, three, four accounted for. One, two, three, four accounted for. And in each box, there's kind of one missing. And that's gonna have to go one each in each of these boxes in column six. It can't be, I can't have two here, right? Or I can't have two here or two here because that would break the box, right? If I had two in the same box, then I'd have five digits between one to four uh, in the same box. So that doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to have to have one in each. And if, let's say, these three were the same as these three, then I need to put two, or the one, and then two of the two, three, four digits here, even though there's only one available. So these three are all also different. Um, and I, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna color it. I'm just gonna try to remember that. But I, what that tells me is that my eights are done, right? I've got a six, seven, eight triple here. That's one of my eights. A six, seven, eight triple here. That's my second. So these are not eight. And then here I've got a six, seven pair. Now my sevens are done because again I've got one seven in one of these, another seven in one of these, a third seven in one of these. So that has to be six which means this is a one, two, three. That's my four. So this is the seven and this is the six. Uh, that's gotta be a three because it's not two, um, clearly. And it's not four because this is a one, two, three pair. So that's four. Uh, that makes this not a six. This is a three. That's a four. This is not six. It's two. So this is not eight. Just getting rid of some of my uh, clear markings. So one of these is a two. Right, because I've got a two, three, four, triple here. This isn't the two, so one of the two is here. So that's a three, actually. Just gets rid of three from there, making this a three. So now this is not a seven. This is not a seven either. Um, it feels like there's kind of two ways around. These could all go. Um, and so now I'm just thinking, can I just do Sudoku? So, Okay, where does the six go in row nine? Well, it's not any of these. It's not these because of the six, so the six has to go here. That makes this an eight, 
which makes this a four and a one, and a three, that makes this a six, and this a seven, that makes this the one. So now our ones are done, right? Ones are done, twos, yeah, I don't think, I don't, uh, so that's a two. Um, that's a two because, uh, so these twos eliminate those from being twos. This two, three pair eliminates those from being a two. So the two has to go there. Um, I think that's it for threes. That's a three for the same reason. That's a three. Okay, fours. That's one of these. That's one of these. Yeah, I'm not seeing how to finish fours. Okay. Um, sixes, yeah, so that's a six. That's a six. Okay, there we go. That makes this seven, eight, six. And does that let me finish off twos? Oh, that does finish off twos. Threes. Uh, threes are done. Fours. Those. These. Yeah. Ah, uh, interesting. Okay, so fours are not yet done. Uh, sixes. Here. And here for here. Sixes are done. Sevens. Okay, sevens. There has to be one here because that's the only place it can go in the column. Uh, it's one of those. One of these, so not that one. That's this one. And one of these, not that one. So those are quite possible sevens. Those are just sevens, and that makes this a four, which makes this a four, four, seven, seven. So that finishes those. We've got four done, sevens done, sixes are done. Wait, eights? Okay, I've got a lot of eights to do. So everything else is five, eight, nine. Uh, so everything else is five, eight, or nine. The only thing I have is I have a nine. Okay, so let's. I have one nine and two eights to do the rest. So, uh, and this sees eight and nine, so that's a five. So that's nice. So that's eight. So that's eight. Um, eight is one of those, which means it's not here. So that's five, eight, nine, five. These five nine five. These are all five nines. Um, eight. This is also five nine. And one of these is eight. This is eight. So that's not eight. That's not a five. That's going to disambiguate all these. And this is a five nine pair. That's five. That's nine. Eight five. Eight nine. Nine, five, and nine. All done. Uh, yeah, so that was not as bad as I thought it would be. So that was your clean reasoning. Uh, hopefully, you tried it yourself and got made some progress. So thanks for watching. Bye.